Hi, welcome back to Celebrating Culture. I'm here today with Captain Char Cuevas and John Lafitte Marina. Captain, Hi. welcome to the show. How you doing, Mr. Charles? We went out on your airboats. You took me to a place, a sediment pipeline. You know? Yeah, that was in uh, Old Weeks Marine job site. They brought that sediment in from seven miles away from the river and rebuilt the marshland with it. Man, it, it, it's done a hell of a job. I hear the trees are almost like 30 feet tall. Oh yeah, those suckers are three, three and four stories already. I mean, it's unbelievable. These guys are already putting deer stands on it. Really? Oh yeah. So when you do that, you got the habitat, birds, so you restore it, but you also got storm protection, but then deer stands already? Oh yeah, it's so hard because that sand from the river, when it comes in, I mean, it is intensely hard. It's like a concrete. So, okay. you know, they put that out there and, and, and it's what built Louisiana in the first place. You know, that sediment from the river is coming from all the states up north from us. So, you know, by the time it gets here, it, it really, really packs down really well. And it's usually used for housing foundations all over the world. My parents used it when, back in the 60s. And the coastal restoration people bring in vegetation. And... That's the weird part about it. You know, as hard as it is, you know, it's like concrete. But if you put a seed in it, somehow the plants figure out how to come out of it. <laughs> well, I got to think that nutrients in that river just got to be so powerful. Absolutely, one would assume so. Um, I'm not really 100% sure how they planted it. I would imagine that river sediment's got to have something, you know, especially with all the farmland up north. Did it impact the other life that was in the marsh? No, sir. So no. with the pipeline, it's it's really like a, a surgical thing. You go right in, boom. They take the pipe and then they put a little bit and they march forward a little bit at a time and they build a road all the way until they get to where they're going to be. So you'll have a little sand road all the way to where the job site is. So as far as impacting, I mean, that's about as bad as it gets. And the biggest thing now is Barataria. How do you feel? That's that's a huge project. That's a billion dollars. It's really tough to judge, you know, is it the right thing? Is it the wrong thing? You don't know if you should trust the information you get and you don't know where it's coming from. And that's about Port Sulphur, I think, by Empire. Right, right, the big, the Barataria waterway. And that's all diversion. the way down to you guys. Yes, I mean, you know, as a business, yes, absolutely. It's going to impact us seriously. I don't know what it's going to do, you know, Charles, I really don't. But there's nothing else on the table to help the system out. And just in my short 32 years of life, I've seen the land change dramatically. I don't know if the system will hold another 32 years without some without kind of major right. action happening. Is it the right thing? Is it the wrong thing? I really can't tell you. I mean, we're just preparing ourselves for whatever happens. I mean, the debate here is how you get it there. You have one half of the people saying, well, let's bring it in by dredge, just like the job I brought you to. And then you have another half that says, well, we need to open the river and let the river build it up naturally. And then we can put some things in place, some buffers, that way to catch that sediment. We don't really know what direction is the right way. I can tell you now that dredging works phenomenally. They have a challenge because when they open up Canaveral Pass or Mardi Gras Pass, the amount of fresh water that comes in wrecks havoc on the charters. Absolutely. The charter business here in, at least in Lafitte, tends to be more or less redfish, trout, you know, your drum, your sheephead, all that kind of stuff, which tend to be more brackish water fish. You start pumping a ton of fresh water in here, now you have to travel further to get it. Oyster fishermen, now they have to go further to get it. Now all their leases they've been paying for and growing oysters for, oh. for months and months and years, are now vanished. And not only that, man, you know, we talk about ecosystems here. How about financial stability? You know, if you tip one end and not the other end, what happens? Right. The whole system right. tilts. Sure. So, you know, if you impact one section, it impacts it somewhere else. We really don't know what's going to be the impacts. I will tell you now that the fisheries is going to hurt very bad at first, but we may be able to put some things in place to help the fishermen, you know, or maybe their boats need to be rigged to go further out or you know what I'm saying? Right. Maybe they, they, they have to find out some help the somewhere. Politicians have their job cut out. We were out at Mardi Gras Pass, and there's a gentleman that just spent forty thousand dollars building a camp, and that's a lot of money. Absolutely. And then you're going to open up the pass and change his his whole business. You don't have insurance for that. You can see how the diversion Mardi Gras Pass has filled the canal in. If you swing to your right, you can see all the limbs and logs and everything else that's coming out the river and it's filling it in. If you don't know where you're going in this canal, seriously hurt yourself sure. or even kill yourself. Redfish and trout does not like this water. And that's why you got to go 25, 30 miles out to find clean water. Hope to find clean water. It's destroying everything. I mean, I know I talked to some oystermen today. That marina used to have 50 oyster boats in it. But since BP and the diversion, there's not an oyster boat that fishes over here because of the fresh water. The fresh water just kills the oysters. So you're taking away you know, everybody's income. This used to be the richest parish in the state. I think there needs to be some financial help somewhere. This thing has been going on for 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years. So there needs to be some kind of way, you know, to help these fishermen along. Like I said, either it's, you know, a tax break, 
or something of that effect to help them get their vessels and get things made to where if they have to go out or they have to use extra fuel that they can get it and you can get the yeah. system moving yeah. along and once everyone gets used to it you know then we're then we're okay you know and they've been doing a lot of things man i have to say i have to give it to uh you know whoever's in charge and and you know they put in all of these uh rock systems and these rock jetties and all yes. to at least stop it you right. know at least if we can stop it we're going to keep in touch we'll be back with you down the road if someone who wants to come here, do you have a website? Absolutely. It's www.jeanlafitteharbor.com. That's J-E-A-N, Jean Lafitte, <laughs> L-A-F-I-T-T-E, harbor.com. Two T's. Two T's. What's the number? 504-689-2013. Uh, and you can ask for Captain Shaw. You can talk to the office, anybody. Great. Captain Shaw, good seeing you again, my Thank friend. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. All right. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more Celebrating Culture.